Um, good evening, my YouTube viewers. It's Crystal here. I just wanted to do another code review with you tonight. And basically, the code review is a data set that I actually got off the um, Facebook Profit, FB Profit website. And um, but it looked like a good data set, so I thought, well, I'd go ahead and use it, even though I wasn't going to use it on FB Profit. So, because it looked like the data set that I wanted for my purposes. So, I went ahead and made the program in Google Colab, which is a free online Jupyter notebook. Google Colab is a really good uh, platform to use, namely because it's free. And the only drawback that I see that it has is it doesn't have a very good undo function. But if you accidentally delete or overwrite some code, you can go into the save history. And the save history, if you look in the save history, you might be able to retrieve the code back. I have in the past gone into the save history and retrieved code that I've deleted or overwritten. And then so after I created the program in Google Colab, I needed to import the libraries. And so basically for this program, I imported Pandas, which is a data processing library, and it creates and maintains data frames. I imported NumPy, which is a numerical library, and it enables you to form num perform numerical computations and also create NumPy arrays. I imported math, which is an infill library in Python, which enables you to do things like square roots, which we're going to be using in this program. I imported stats models, which is a statistics library with Python. Uh, stats models originally had been part of SciPy, but they originally, but they eventually took it out of SciPy and made it a library in its own right. I imported matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, which is a graphics library, and it enables you to plot the data points onto a graph. And then I also imported Seaborn, which is a statistical graphics library that has been written on the back of matplotlib. So those are the um, libraries that I have imported in order to run this program. So after I imported the libraries, then I read the CSV file. And I got this CSV file off of the Facebook Profit website, but um, I just wanted to try it out and see what it was like, even though I haven't used Facebook Profit on it. I have done a lot of programs with Facebook Profit, but I think in this particular um, program, I'm not using Facebook Profit. I've got enough Facebook Profit programs to use as examples that I'm not. I don't want to make any more, and not unless it's a competition or something like that. And then, so because this, because I got this off the Facebook Profit website, well, Facebook says that your date column has to be DS and your uh, column, your target column has to be Y. And so that's what Facebook Profit says you have to do. And then so if your column, if your columns have other names, in order to run on Facebook Profit, you have to actually um, convert them to DS and Y. So that's why it says DS and Y, because um, Facebook didn't want us to have to convert the names of the columns already, so they just gave them those names. So now I'm going to analyze the data frame, and um, when we analyze the data frame, you can see that you've got your one column is a float, and then the other column is an index, and it says date time index. To 905 entries. So we check for any null variable, null characters, and we don't have any null values, so we don't have to worry about imputing any values. And then what we do is we plot our values onto a graph, and so we just use pdf.plot 
big size 20 comma 4. So there's our graph, there's a plot of the time series and you can see it, it looks really great. I'm not sure exactly what kind of time series it is because Facebook didn't say. And then now what we wanted to do is I wanted to do something a little bit special. So I did a two-sided view of the time series. And the reason why is because if all of the values are positive, then you can do a two-sided view if you wanted to. So I did that. So now what we've done is we've resampled because in that original data frame, it was sampling every day. So what we want to do is we want to resample it to MS, and MS means the beginning of the month. So rather than sampling it every day, it's going to be sampling it at the beginning of the month. So when we resample it to the beginning of the month, this is what the new plot looks like. So now we're going to be decompose the seasons. And when you decompose it, basically what you're doing is you're taking out everything. So you've got your observed uh, data set, and then you've got your trend. So your trend is long-term indications. And so even your trend looks a bit wobbly. And then you've got your seasons. Your seasons is short-term indications. So trend is long-term and season is short-term. And then you've got your residual, which could be noise or something like that. So after we decompose it, what we're going to do is we're going to split the data frame up into training and test sets. So I decided to make the uh, train set 90% of the the DF and the test set to be 10%. So now what we've done is we set our train and our test set up and we check our shapes. So on the train set you have 88 uh, rows by one column and on the test set you have 10 rows by one column. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do simple exponential smoothing and then so when we do simple exponential smoothing you can see that the um, y hat is all one variable. We checked our error rate on simple exponential smoothing and it's 30, our MSC is 31. And when you can look at the, compare the actual values to the predicted values and you can see it's all one predicted value of 246. So this is what we've done. We plotted the predicted value against the test data. And so you can see that there's your predicted value against your test data. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a Holt model. And the Holt model is a little bit different from the Holt Winters model. I think it's not as, um, not as elaborate. We can do a, a test and say, Because I just happen to be on the, it says simple X smoothing. So we can do, a, just see what it says about halt. It says, um, it's a, it's an X, it's halt exponential smoothing. And it just tells you a little bit about it. Not too much, but it's a type of exponential smoothing. This is a full implementation of Holt's exponential smoothing. As per one, Holt is a restricted version of exponential smoothing. And that's all they have to tell you in the notes, which if you've been watching my videos, I've said in previous videos that their documentation isn't very good, you know. Um, and because their documentation isn't very good, what you have to do is you have to go on the internet and looking for sample code and looking for someone to explain it to you because if you want to learn how to do something on the documentation on the internet it's it's going to be very challenging 
that's a nice way to put it. So with Holtz, you can see that we've got um, we've got slight variations in the white hat, and we check our RMSC, which is 36, and that's compared to simple exponential smoothing, which is 31. So the error is more in halt. And you can check your data frame so you can compare everything against the data frame. And then so we've got a um, we've got a graph, and so you can see there it is on the graph. It's a very small variations. And now we're going to do the whole winters model, which is supposed to be really easy. It's really easy to do. So we check the whole winter's model, and uh, I said seasonal periods of eight because I went and looked at the um, at the at the chart, and I could see eight seasonal periods in the train set. So I thought, well, let's try that, and said trend is going to be additive, and seasonal is going to be additive, and we printed the summary. So you can see the summary here. And so you've got your white hat. So your white hat has more varying uh, values. And we check our um, RMSC. Our RMSC is 33, which is still not as good as the simple exponential smoothing. And you compare your actual values to your predicted values. And so you can do that. And then what we've done is we plotted it onto a graph. So you can see how the predicted values compare to the actual values. But the whole winters is a lot easier to do than the arena. And so that it, that's it. That's sort of like um, ends it for our code review. But when I did the code review, I think I thought of some other things that I would like to do in the code review. So it's always a good idea for me to do a code review because that way, if I made a mistake, I can pick it up in the code review. And so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because I've covered everything in the code review. So I would like to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to my channel and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you very much for watching this video. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.